Howdy from down on the farm. We thought we would give you a tour of our greenhouse this week. It's our covered place where we grow all year round. This is my favorite spot. It's a little board sitting on the edge of a bed where I plant seeds and sit amongst the garden when there's a garden here. This is where the plants start and our little baby plants grow. So if you watched previous videos, the video about how to say our farm's name, you watched us plant the spinach. So we thought we'd give you a little update. If you haven't seen that video yet, the link is going to be up above. So we have the greenhouse for several reasons. One reason is because we have clay in our soil and it makes it hard to plant anything. So we did raised beds in here. We filled them with half manure and half compost and mixed that together. And we've been planting in here for three years. So we're getting ready to add some more soil to these boxes. The second reason we plant in a greenhouse is because we can plant year round in here. In the spring and the fall, we do a lot of cold crops. So kale, cabbage, carrots. We plant beets, lots of lettuce. And then in the summer, we put in tomatoes and peppers, and since it's so warm in here, they get extra heat. We can start them early, we can keep them in here later. I believe we had tomatoes in here until November this year. Some downsides to growing in a greenhouse are bugs. Because not a whole lot of air gets put through here, we get quite a few bugs. We choose to keep this um, electricity free. And so there's no electric fans blowing air through here. We don't heat it in the winter. We did find out this winter that a great bug control is putting the chickens in when there's no greens in here. And they go through and they pick out all the bugs and they get food that we don't have to buy for them. And they clean up the garden and they also till it and they fertilize it. So that worked really well for us. The second problem with a polytunnel, at least in Oregon, is mold. We get a lot of mold in here again, the airflow issue. As we choose not to run ele electric fans through here to blow air, we do try and keep it ventilated with the doors and keeping it cool by spraying it down with cold water, and that helps. But we still fight a lot of mold depending on the weather and the ventilation inside the greenhouse. Another nice thing about a greenhouse is that because it's covered, you can garden when it's raining. That can also be a downside because it's easy to forget to water the garden when it's pouring outside. But it serves as kind of another food storage, so we don't have to cut lettuce or kale until we need it. And that takes less room in the refrigerator and keeps the plants fresher. You're looking at the greenhouse here in the background. I started with this hillside. I cut into the hill uh, up here on the hillside and took the dirt that I cut out of the hillside and moved it down hill and filled it in out there to make a flat surface. Greenhouse is 12 feet wide, so I 
made a surface that was about 14 to 15 feet wide, used that to start building my greenhouse on. After I got my ground leveled out, I just put garden boxes in. I laid out some garden boxes on either side and down the middle, leaving myself an aisle on each side. We decided to use garden boxes because our soil was really bad and we didn't want to plant directly in the soil. So I left room in here between my garden beds. I left room for an aisleway, a place to walk, a place to work. I assembled garden boxes, built a hoop house over the top of the garden boxes. Next thing I did after that was to put in some PVC pipe down here as holders for supports going over the top. And then I used 10, 10 foot long sections of PVC going up and over. I joined them to, together up in the middle with a coupler. Another 10 foot uh, section of PVC coming down this way and connecting down on the other side using the same sort of system. Just another piece of PVC in the, in the ground and strapped with these straps right here to the side of the garden box. So with that PVC strapped in there, um, that's gonna support each uh, 20 foot section of PVC going over the top. I spaced them every two feet. Each one of these ribs here is two feet apart. I have a center pole going down the middle that I use zip ties. I just drilled some holes in here and zip tied it over the top and that helps support everything. So our greenhouse here is 40 to 42 feet long. I don't remember exactly what it was. And basically it's just this hoop house built over the top of my garden boxes. Uh, one of the things that I came up with after the fact, after in fact a season or two of using this thing was we realized we didn't use this back door of the greenhouse very often and we were needing a place up off the ground where we could set up seed trays. So I built a little shelf here to support some seed trays so we can do our starts and stuff in here. So after I got the hoop portion built, I built the ends. And basically I had some reclaimed wood that was given to us and I just built a frame here on the end and closed it in with some old lumber. Mounted some doors on here, put uh, put greenhouse plastic over the doors. So that's, uh, that's how I framed in both ends. This here is our screen door. It's a chicken screen. It keeps chickens and cats out. We found right away that keeping the cats and the chickens out of here was a problem because they love it. It's nice and warm. Cats like to dig in the garden boxes and destroy your plants. The chickens, they like to come in and eat all the plants and tear everything up. So we had to come up with a way of keeping them out. So I just made a simple frame with some chicken wire on it. And that fits in there like that. And then I, I found at the hardware store a special latch for holding this closed. There's a piece of wood screwed into the frame so that it can pivot and it comes down crosses over in front of the, the screen and sits on this other screw right here. Now there's a patent pending on this, so <laughs> you can't steal this idea. You do this on both sides and now it's, it's held up. It's not gonna fall over. What hardware store did you get that at? I can't say what hardware store, that's top secret information. <laughs> On a winter day, it'll be quite a bit warmer than the outside. On a summer day, it'll be really hot and we've got to put a shade cloth over it. So tucked away in the barn right now, I've got a, a shade cloth that we'll throw over this thing in the summer months when it's really warm because it'll get up over 100 degrees in here. So sort of the final piece of this greenhouse was putting plastic on it. You got to have greenhouse plastic. I went to a greenhouse supply store located in our area and ordered a 100 foot roll that was 20 feet wide by 100 feet long, and it's greenhouse plastic, six mil UV rated uh, greenhouse plastic. So this will be much more durable than just some ordinary sheet of plastic that you might buy from your local hardware store. All right, this is looking at it from the outside. So I unrolled my big old roll of plastic, stretched it out over this, that was kind of fun. Once I had it stretched over, I fixed it to the side of the greenhouse here on the ends with just a piece of lath and some screws. And then in addition to 
fixing the plastic to the ends here, I also did it down on the edges down by the, the garden boxes down here. So that method has worked for us for three years now and hopefully for many more. Well, we're out here looking at the greenhouse. I thought that I would give you a little update on our chickens. If, if you have been watching our videos on getting our chickens into our herb garden and our tea garden, if you haven't, the links are above. And go ahead and check those out. The chickens have tilled up their original spot. We have moved them next door. Before, it looked like this. And now, it looks like this. Thanks for joining us this week on our tour of our greenhouse and we will see you next week.